nations and in humankind, which has changed the way we live up our lives. Uh, electricity for a change, uh, the train, the flights, airplanes, uh, internet, Facebook, WhatsApp, the telephone. These have changed the way we live our life. And without any of these, it's difficult to now figure out or envision how we are going to live our life. Similarly, in the field of medicine, the antibiotics, the radiation, the imaging techniques, laparoscopy, all of these has changed the way we treat disorders. In the same vein, in the same light, stem cell therapy is an idea, a concept whose time has come. It is not futuristic, it is not in the future, it is not science fiction, it is something which is right here, which is going, to, which is helping change lives of many, many, many patients with incurable disorders. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. So what are stem cells? Very, very simply put, for us to understand, stem, like a stem of a tree, gives rise to branches, and then given the proper fertilizer and water, gives rise to leaves, flowers, and fruits. Similarly, there are cells in our body which can multiply many, many fold. One can become thousands. And depending on the type of environment, the type of signal that you give, can become a liver, if you put near the liver. It can become a heart-like cell. It can become a bone. It can uh, repair the bone. It can uh, treat arthritis. Uh, possibly uh, give insulin-like cells in pancreas and similarly stretching into the brain and spine help repair the brain and spine. So this is a fascinating field of stem cells which today we are going to enter in the next 10 minutes. So when the thought or concept about stem cells started, it started with embryonic stem cells. Embryonic stem cells are cells which are taken out from 3 to 4 days embryos. All of us, when we were in our mother's womb, were stem cells. We divided into 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, a bunch of cells. And from these bunch of cells, when uh, they are cultured in the laboratory, and we found that they can become heart, they can become uh, brain-like cells, they can become liver. In fact, that was one fascinating day when we kept the cells in the culture plate and they started beating like heartbeat. And it's such a fascinating uh, sight to behold. So that's, that's, that was what you know, started making us think, OK, now we can form different tissues in our body. How can we use this to repair different parts of our body? So embryonic stem cells, actually, the, the concept started way back in 1990s. However, it got mired with a lot of controversies, ethical issues as well as scientific issues. Now imagine a child who was a one cell stage becoming a complete fetus in nine months. So the amount of multiplication that takes place, the, the characteristic of an embryonic stem cell is that it can form teratomas. So that was the problem in terms of scientific uh, problem that it could in the long term form cancerous tissues. But apart from that, uh, in 2001, uh, when George Bush was in power in the US, he stopped federal funding for embryonic stem cell research based on religious uh, issues and not on scientific issues. And that's the time the field of stem cell actually took a setback. So when the West stopped uh, putting a focus on stem cells, the East took over. And then we started looking at other options. What are the other options we found? We found cord blood stem cells taken from a mother uh, when a, chi um, a child is born and the mother and child are born by the placenta and the cord. That has a lot of stem cells and that's like a life insurance policy for the same child. We do know that uh, newborn children and, and new couples are now saving their child's cord blood for, as a future policy investment. What else? We do have what is known as the adult stem cells. And in fact, adult stem cells are the most studied stem cells. In 1990, which I'll be showing you, the uh, Nobel Prize was awarded for the discovery of bone marrow stem cells. And bone marrow stem cells have been used for various cancers, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, and has been most studied. So our own body has regenerative power, and that's what uh, uh, constitutes the adult stem cells. And very recently, in 2012, the Nobel Prize was awarded for a very new concept known as induced pluripotent stem cells. 
very simply put, what it means is it's a customized or a designer stem cells. Everything designer is involved these days, isn't it? So designer, what does it do? It takes the cells from our own skin. So this is my cell taking from my skin. It is right now whatever my age is, which I'm not going to tell you. Okay, and now transform these cells, make them remember how they were as a child. So basically make adult stem cells into an embryonic stem cells without having the ethical issues of embryonic stem cells. And that's the concept of induced pluripotent stem cells that is still under research and has a lot of potential. <coughs> but right now, right today, what do we have? We cannot use embryonic stem cells. It's an absolute no-no because of ethical issues as well as potential of tumors. What we do have for treatment or for immediate transplantation is the adult stem cells. And that's the bone marrow derived stem cells. So that's a green signal for the bone marrow derived stem cells, stem cells from our own fat. We like to give away fat, like liposuction. It's a very good source of stem cells. Our teeth, we take out our wisdom to thinking, oh my god, it's so painful, but it has a lot of stem cells. So think about that. So, but the most studied is the bone marrow, and that's what we use uh, to treat brain disorders. So how is the treatment done? Is it a very horrendous process? No, it's a very simple process. We take out bone marrow from the hip bone. This is the age-old process. Bone marrow is taken using a very simple thin needle. Then stem cells are separated in the laboratory. And what you can see here is stem cells separated from the bone marrow and then injected via a thin needle into spinal fluid. So these are processes independently which have been happening for years together, put together, become a very effective tool. So simple, safe, because from the patient's own body, no rejection, no side effects, no possibility of teratomas, and effective. I will show you how effective. So simple is beautiful, and that's the concept we are using here. So to come to neurological disorders, because that's my passion, uh, I did my uh, postdoctoral fellow right here next door in Navy number in TIFR where we studied how the brain developed and that's where we started thinking what do we do with neurological disorders. Neurological disorders in fact are the most ignored uh, 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 part of uh, in the medicine field. They are diagnosed but nothing definitive is there. Is, don't have any definitive options. The patients are just handed over to rehabilitation therapists to do rehabilitative therapies. Every person who has a brain damage is told nothing can be done. However, the dogma that brain once damaged cannot be repaired has been refuted and we do see the potential of stem cells to repair the brain damage. So autism epidemic, <coughs> one in 40 children in every school is now uh, supposed to be diagnosed with autism. Cerebral palsy, 70 million in the world. Just look at the statistics. It's an epidemic proportion, more than HIV, tuberculosis, and AIDS all put together, we have now an epidemic of neurological disorders, and hence we need to find a definitive treatment option, and that's where stem cell therapy comes in. So these are the different disorders that we treat, a few of them just to mention and look at the brain. Now this is the example, this is the brain, and you can see the blue part here is damaged, green is normal. You can see after the stem cell therapy, the damage is repaired. This is a brain of a child with injury at birth, cerebral palsy when the oxygen supply to the brain is reduced. Here you can see the damage here getting improved with stem cell therapy. That is the fascinating field of stem cell therapy. This is a child's brain, a damage due to suffocation and hypoxia at the age of three years. Very, very sad uh, uh, case. And after the treatment, six months, you can see the brain lighting up. So what is stem cell doing? It is stimulating the brain to function better. It's like a teacher who is is inspiring a child who is very dull to work better. I tell, you have a vehicle whose battery is down, stem cell helps to recharge the battery so that you can drive the vehicle better. This is a child who came to us from Kenya at the age of 13 years, was totally, never, could never go out for 13 years because it's very, very difficult to manage a child with autism, is now riding a bicycle, going to the school and swimming. This is a child, again, who came to us from Nigeria because of jaundice and severe brain damage could never sit upright with the stem cell therapy is it now able to sit, stand and do his own activities. This is a child who came to us from, from Allahabad very recently 
who had hypoxic brain injury could not, could not even hold his neck or sit and now can walk with support. So these are the possibilities that open up with stem cell therapy. This is a girl right here in Hawaii, 26 year old girl with intellectual disability in autism. For 26 years, she never she could never sleep on her own. She slept with her parents. Now she is independent. She can cook. She works in a catering company. She participates in various activities and she plays sitar. This is the possibility which is opened up with stem cell therapy. This is the key to many, many closed doors. I say that stem cell therapy, what it does, it, it removes a cloud which is there in front of our eyes and makes us possible to see the sunlight. And that's what it is doing for patients with neurological disorder. That's the potential it has to treat many, many disorders. And Ravi, my friend here, keeps telling me that soon he's going to stop doing liver transplantations because stem cells is going to replace organ transplant one day. <laughs> so welcome to the world of stem cells.